Hi friends, it's Nyanda here. Thanks so much for joining me today on Foundational Truths. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how to navigate living in two places at once. So many of you are on the tail end of closing one chapter and entering into a whole new chapter and the path has been paved for you. But here you are feeling like you're stuck in the middle of two worlds. And in order to navigate these two worlds, it can become challenging. And so I'm here today to give you some, some tips on what you can do in order to navigate both worlds. So the first thing you don't want to do is you do not want to quit. Do not quit. You are on the right path. You have your enduring. So continue enduring. Continue fighting this good fight of faith. Number two, you can't get angry. Like you can't give into anger. I've been waiting eight years, nine, 10, 15, 20 years, and nothing has happened. All this praying and fasting and it's in vain. It is not in vain. That's what the enemy wants you to give into. If he doesn't get you to quit, he wants you to give into becoming angry at the process and the length of time it's taking and just getting frustrated and sort of retrieving back to how you were before this whole thing. The Lord does not want you to retrieve. It's not time to retrieve and like a turtle, get back into your shell. That's not what the Lord is asking you to do. You are absolutely a butterfly who is about to take flight. But when the full time has come, then the Lord will say, go. He will say, go, now it is time to take flight. So you have gone through the, the metamorphosis process of starting out as a caterpillar and going through all the developmental process. And now you are a butterfly and you're ready to take flight. You are just waiting for the go ahead. And so now here you are, not a caterpillar, not at the beginning stage, but you're at the end of the life cycle and you're ready to go. Every time you hear a prophetic word, you you think, is this the time to go? Is this the time to go? And it's, it's actually taking longer than you anticipated. But I want to encourage you to hang in there because even in you getting into the position to take flight, he is still working some stuff in you. Our God is so specific and he's so strategic at every step of the way. He is teaching us. He is teaching us. So what do you think he's teaching you at this time? It's certainly not frustration and anger and throwing in the towel and getting mad at people or retrieving and going back into your shell. It's not that. One of the things that I believe he's trying to teach us is he wants us to see the importance of intimacy with him because when you get the promises you'll get specific things but when you go into deep relationship with god when you enter into the holy of holies and you spend time in his presence you get everything Somebody said that when you get God, you get everything. And that's absolutely true. You have to go after God and not the things. And of course, I'm not saying you're going after things, but he wants you to really learn that even as I'm about to unveil all of this to you, I want you to remember that the most important thing is intimacy with me intimacy with me and that will give you peace because the world could come crashing down and the world is not getting any better but you have to learn to remain in deep intimacy with God regardless of your present circumstance deep intimacy with him is the biggest gift that you get throughout this whole thing and so I'm not saying God is not going to give you the promise because once he's spoken it to you, it's pretty much a done deal. His word cannot return to him void. His word is intentional and purposeful. So whatever he says he's going to do, he is going to absolutely do it. 
And so while we are waiting on the promise that is so close, you can taste it. You may have even experienced preludes of the promise, but you haven't seen the full manifestation of it. But it is so close that you can taste it. And so how do you navigate this very strange position? It's one thing to be in the the thick of it all in transition, but to be on the outskirts of it, that's a totally different spot. And so what we have to do is we have to learn to live bilocationally. So bilocation is a state of being in two places at once. And, and this is not, you know, once you say something like that, people automatically think, uh, new age and spirituality. I'm not talking about that stuff because there is no other legal way, legal way to access the spirit world except through Jesus Christ. No other way except through Jesus Christ. Every other way is illegal. And so I'm talking about the Bible here, the Bible. And so we have to learn how to live in our present circumstance and to also live by faith. Paul, I love what Paul said. He said, I have learned contentment in all situation. He learned contentment in all situations. And it's not like he's, he's saying, I'm going to stay here forever. And we're not going to stay here forever. We know that we're going to get that uh, go ahead to take flight. But it, we have to wait until the Lord says, let's go. And we live by bi locationally already because we live in the physical world and we serve a God that we do not see. However, there is so much evidence around us of the existence of God outside of creation and the animals and all that. We see it in our relationship with him and even to go in his presence. His presence is so amazing. His presence sometimes is so thick. You almost feel like you can reach out and touch him. You, more than anybody else, a follower of Christ would know how real the Lord is. And so we have to learn to live in our present circumstances and also live by faith. And so Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So we're not merely hoping on these promises and hoping that there is a God. We have an assurance that our promises will come to pass and we are convicted in our inner being, in our spirit, that we will see the promises of God come to pass. It's going to happen. The Lord will fulfill his promise. So regardless of what you're experiencing now, you must keep on believing and trusting by faith that you are on the right path and that, that the Lord will fulfill his promises. So the other uh, morning when I was about to pray, the Holy Spirit said, look ahead look ahead. It's interesting. In my uh, previous video, I spoke about a dream about believers being on a bus. And usually when you're traveling, especially a long distance, there are signs that tells you when you're nearing a certain spot. So if you need to stop off and eat or use the bathroom, there are signs. And so whenever you hear somebody says, look ahead, or you see a sign that says, a road sign that says, look ahead, that means something is coming up. You are close to something. So I believe he's saying to us that you are on the right path, but I don't want you to stop here. I want you to keep on going because you're very close to the destination. So look ahead. Holy Spirit is guiding us in the right direction. And all the prophetic words that you've been hearing, they're not to tease you. They're not for God to say, I'm going to give it to you, but not now. I'm going to give it to you, but no, he's not teasing you. Those prophetic words are for your encouragement. It's to build your faith. It's to build up to something. It's to build your endurance and to have you continue going until you're actually at your destination. I will leave you guys with this. In the dream I had in the last video, the gentleman that was in the center, almost in the middle of the bus, when he looked at me, he said, if I'm going to leave this world now, I'm going to leave praising so that when I go into the new world, I'm going 
to be praising as well. So he's praising out so he can praise in. And I think that's a phenomenal message for us, something we should adapt. As we are leaving this new chapter, let's not leave angry. Let's leave at, in peace. And that peace can only come by spending time with God. And let's leave praising. As we leave, we're going to leave praising. And as we enter in, we're going to enter in praising. Hallelujah. All right, friends, I hope this has encouraged you. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. And remember, God still has an amazing plan for your life. Take care. Bye-bye.